will be all right. Amen. Yes. Yes. At this time, we will have our communication minister by Christmas office. Good morning. Good morning and a happy new year to everyone. Happy new year to you. Here are your morning announcements for January the 8th, 2023. The flowers that are doing our altar today are given in love and memory of Father and Mother Murray Neesmith Sr. and Blanche L. Neesmith and Brother Lawrence Neesmith by the Neesmith family. The church would like to say thank you to the Neesmith family for the beautiful flowers. Following the announcements, Dr. Tara C. Canty and Mr. Linwood Neesmith would like to come before you with some, out, some updates. January the parish notices, January the 11th, Bible study, 6 o'clock p.m. January 11th, Zoom, membership, secretary training, 7.30 p.m. January the 16th, United Methodist Men, fellowship, 12 o'clock p.m. January 17th, Zoom Finance Committee Audit Training, 7.30 p.m. January the 18th, Trusting Meeting, 6.30 p.m. January the 18th, Zoom Finance Secretary Training, 7.30 p.m. And January 25th, Zoom Trustee Training, 7.30 p.m. Please keep these dates in mind. Write them down. They're very important. Elijah United Methodist Church in Kingshaville host their annual healing service on January 18th at 7 o'clock p.m. Friendship family is invited to attend Reverend Terry C. Fleming. Our DS will be the speaker. Please make plans to attend. We will not have Bible study on January the 18th. Finance statements will be issued upon request. Please call the church office as soon as possible. A sum of money was lost in the parking lot on December the 31st. If you can give the correct amount, you may claim it. Online giving is available. To give your tithes, offering donations, online visit www.friendship-unitedmethodistchurchsouthcarolina.com. Once you, once you get there, click donate and follow the prompts. Thank you for your continuous support. Florence NAAC Annual MLK Commemorative Celebration is on January the 16th. It is at the Majority Baptist Church. And it, the, the address is 414 North Cook Street, Florence, South Carolina, 29501, where Reverend Dr. Alfonso Porter is the pastor. If you want more information about MLK Day, please see me for the info. Dear churches, thanks again for all your excellent submissions for the January Advocate. This edition is now online and in homes and churches across the, across the state. You can view it, it also at www.advocatessc.org. Now we begin work on the, on the February edition of the Advocates, which is sure to be chock full of great news about the work of God's people serving at the hands and feet of Christ throughout South Carolina. Your submissions are wanted and welcome. And remember, they do not need to be perfect. We edit everything through. Just email your submissions to me by the deadline of January the 10th. Thanks so much. Happy New Year and God bless. Jessica Brody, editor. South Carolina United Methodist Advocate Newspaper. Healthy conflict in the church. A worship helping church leaders see opportunities for growth through conflict. Congressional Specialist Chris Lynch. It begins on January 21st, 9.30 a.m. through 12 noon at Liberty Chapel United Methodist Church. For questions, contact Chris Lynch. If you want more information about this healthy conflict in the church, see me for more information. 
All right, now it's time to, to recognize our birthdays for the month of January. When I call your name, please stand. Central and Franklin, Franklin, Makai Morris, Lacey Neesmith, Keisha Eady, Miranda Davis, Latanya Morris, Lydia James, Tremaine M. Williams, Cecilia Cecilia May Presley, Leroy Prochet, LaKayla Lawrence, Calandra Morris, Dolores F. Williams, Brian Gregg, Verne, Vernice, Verne McCutcheon, Nina Presley, Nicole Garner, Eva Bradley, Harry James Presley, Makaya Harper, Michelle Harper, William Alexandra Swinton, Josiah Fillmore, Sheila P. Lee, the one and only, Willie Mae Scott, Fred Amos McRae, LaShawn Neesmith, Treshawn J. Neesmith, Joseph E. Porsche, Kiana Neesmith Chestnut, Chestnut, Justin Presley, Veronica Julius, Joseph Neesmith, Nathaniel E. Owens, Tina K. Presley, Joe Neesmith, Marie, Maria Neesmith, and Valerie Neesmith. Now it's time to wish our members a happy birthday. church 
and tell them you would like to purchase a ticket or donate to this wonderful, wonderful cause, please come out and let's celebrate love on February the 11th. I do not see Brother Linwood, but as soon as he... Brother Linwood is coming in the door. Amen. Look at him right on time. At this time, we'll have an update from um, our very own building committee chairperson, Brother Linwood Neesmith. Again, please don't forget, February the 11th, we need to see you in the place, celebrating love. Even if you don't have a love, come out, you might find one there. Good morning, friends here. Good morning. Please excuse me for being tardy. You know, God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, this morning, I just want to give you a little update on um, where we are as a committee and some information that we are working on presently. Um, first thing I would like to do is just um, thank each and every one of you for uh, being here and praying for us and supporting us. Without you, we can't be successful. Uh, the building committee is presently working on uh, a grant for $100,000 businesses to assist us with the renovation of bill um, that we have going forward. And that takes a process. And that process is uh, gathering data data such as um, demographics, which is basically, if you know anything about demographics, it's just the general area, who lives in the area, um, their income level, whether they're male, female, their age, bracket. And this is done um, because we want to know um, who is attending church. And in our church, I think most of the members are living within 15 miles. I think we have some that lives in Florence, maybe a little bit further than that, Georgetown, Lake City, or something like that. But it's to give us a snapshot of who is attending and their abilities financially wise to support um, financial needs of the church. So with that being said, uh, we're at the end of the process and we should be submitting this information this week. And we are praying that we are praying and we are praying that it's accepted. And we need you to pray for us each and every day in this endeavor. And as far as the building itself, uh, one contract has come out and he came before you and gave you his, uh, his, his decision on what he, or his recommendation on what he think we should be doing and, and how we should go forward. We have two other contractors, which is Atkinson, which is a member of Belfour. Belfour is a is an organization uh, with A and I, and what they do is they restore uh, damaged buildings as far as hurricanes, tornadoes, winds, you know, natural disasters, and we include that organization in because I think we need options. And just to say, just for some one individual to come out and say, well, you know, I don't think we could save this building, tear it down. Um, we want to give you another option to look at. And I know that, you know, just dealing with dealing with construction, just from my past, that, 
you shouldn't always take your first option, even when you're dealing with your rental business and stuff at home, your repairs. You know, you know when you go out, you have options. So we wanted to include that organization into this process. And they're a professional group. And they'll come out, I mean, they have, they have been here. And I would just like to say this, what they do, they bring out each and every contractor that deals with the building. That's electrical, HVAC, uh, brick and mortar, and structure and roof. All of these individuals came out. It's been a day out here. And, look at it. and we're expecting their uh, recommendation this week. The other organization was uh, Callahan. And Callahan is out of King Street, South Carolina. It's an uh, engineering firm and construction group. And the individual I've been dealing with is Nikki Callahan. And from what he's, he has been telling me is that he has built numerous churches in his area. Hopewell Church, the Bible across the street from McDonald's, uh, a church out on 521, a church over in Salton's. And I haven't been in Hopewell in uh, Bethel. I've been by a couple of the others. So I'm just telling you this so that you know that we are working. And we're trying to give you all the options that we have. We're trying to give you all the information that we're getting. And we want you to understand what the process is. And the process is not a slow, I mean, not a, not a short process. The process is a long process. And even to get these individuals to come out, it's like pulling teeth. Because I guess the process is somewhat tedious because they have to give you their recommendation and they don't want to give you a wrong recommendation and it takes time for them to do this study to look at our situation and tell us which is the best way to go. So that's where we are now. We're waiting on these two other individuals to give us their final recommendation and we'll get the information and look over it and we'll recommendation we'll make a recommendation to use the congregation, and you will have the final say. But we want you to know everything that's involved. We want you to know the good and the bad, so that you can make a good recommendation. Because it's going to take all of us, each and every one of us, working together and supporting this endeavor. And I know that you will. You've done it in the past. We have to have faith. Even if, even if it's the size of a mustard seed. So I won't prolong the service any longer. But I would just like to say thank you for Pastor for allowing me to take this time to update you and let you know where we are. And I look forward to seeing you. I continually ask for your support. And your prayers. Thank you. Thanks to all of you all for the info. And please let us read into it. That what you can remember, like she said, write it down. Because it's good information that just the solve this up the can too. And which Denise Smith gave us. So let us adhere to all the information taken and think about it, and most of all, pray about it. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time, we ask for those who can stand with you, please stand and let's sing the hymn of praise, number 133, leaning on the everlasting arms.
know Jesus is up. That's right. In spite of what we have done, That's what right. we didn't do, That's right. Jesus still loves us. Amen. Amen. And we always have. We say, what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh -huh. So we have a friend that we can lean on. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. At this time, we will have the reading of the Old Testament coming from Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delights. Mm -hmm. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring both justice and right and reveal the truth to the nation. Mm -hmm. He will not cry or shout aloud or cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burnt wick he will not quench. He will bring forth justice and truth. He will not fall or become weak or be crushed and discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. And the islands and the coastal region shall wait hopefully for him and expect his direction and love. Thus says God the Lord, he who created the heaven and stretched them forth. He who spread abroad the earth, that which comes out of it. He who gave breath to the people on it, and the spirit to those who walk in it. I, the Lord, have called. Yes. You are Messiah for a righteous purpose, and it's righteousness. I will take you by the hand and will keep you. I will give you, or I will give you for a covenant to the people of Israel of the light of the nation. To open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, and those who sit in darkness from the prison. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord, yes. that is my name. Yes. And my glory yes. I will not give to another, yes. nor my praise to grave an image. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and the new thing mm. I now declare. Yes. Before they spring forward, I will tell you of them. As I read Isaiah 47 chapter, verses 1 through 9. For those who are able, would you please stand for the reading of the New Testament? Matthew 3rd chapter, verses 13 through 17. And it reads Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to join to be baptized, to John to be baptized by him. But John protests strenuously, having in mind to prevent him, saying, It is I who have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus replied to him, Permit it just now, for this is the fitting way for both of us to be fulfilled all righteousness, that is to perform completely whatever is right. Then he permitted him. And Jesus was baptized. He went up once out of the water, and behold, the heavens were open. And he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, my beloved, in whom I delight. That's how I read Matthew. Third chapter, verse 13 to 17. God had a reason and a blessing. Here's a Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If God has been good, give him a hand clap. As I told the liturgists this morning, that before prayer is lifted up, I want to come before you to first of all say thank you. We have several who are doing well, and Sister Linda Presley here. She, she told me before we went out for the Christmas break that she was having a procedure. And thanks be to God, she's here this morning. Amen. Sister Hamilton, Sister Eva's sister, came home last night. That's a praise moment. Am I right? I want to share something with you. It won't be long before you, but a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, sent me a, a message. You know, God can speak to the least of these. There was this woman who had been stricken with cancer six times. And on the seventh time, she went to see the doctor and the doctor said, Ms. Agnes, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have cancer again. And she said to the doctor, she was, he was waiting on her to say something profound, but she said, Doctor, do you mind if we pray? And she grabbed the doctor's hand. And she said, Doctor, for six times, I was stricken with cancer. But all the times that I was, God, She said, why? Because I know God. All right. All right. And he knows me. Yeah. She said, I'm not praying or worrying about the right, or how long the prayer is, I'm praying the right kind of prayer. Yeah. You see, brothers and sisters, when you know the right kind of prayer to pray, all of that long Temporaneous thinking you're gonna please God, you ain't pleasing God. Just pray that prayer that's on your heart. I want to thank God for yesterday. There was an opportunity that folk just let go and they let God. We walked around this church for seven times. And the power of the Holy Spirit moved. I want to thank the United Women Faith who provided condiments for us as we exited the campus. But the reason I wanted to tell you that is you see, Brother Linwood came up early and he talked about the process going forward. I want you, as we go into this new year, to keep prayer the center of your worship. You with me? Keep prayer as what? The center of your worship. Help me somebody. Worship. Ms. Austin, I'm, I'm sorry for belonging this, but we want to thank God. Brother Edward Presley is still at MUSC. Walked in the other day, even though he couldn't talk, he opened his eyes and he smiled. I wanted to commune him, but his daughter said, Pastor, he's not able to take communion simply because of the 
the trick I would call it in his throat. We are blessed, friendship. Would you agree with me? I said we are blessed. Would you agree? All I'm asking that you do as we venture into this brand new year, let us look after one another. Amen. Amen. Sister Austin, would you come and pray for us? Stay in your word. Not only me, 
church and be a praying church. Yes. You have to be a loving church and a giving church. Yes. It's all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Praise the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray you your thing. Amen. Amen.
There's been times when I I felt in doubt But I didn't give up Even though I gave up Oh!
passage of scripture when the music is there, but this is a ministry this morning. And I need you to pay close attention to Paul's writings from the book of Colossians, the third chapter, verse 12 and 13. Colossians, Colossians, I'm sorry. Third chapter, verse 12 and 13. From the New King James translation reads, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another. Keep that in mind right there. 13th verse reads, bearing with who? One another. And forgiving who? One another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That's what Paul is telling the church at Colossians. I want to use as a theme for this morning. How much hurt do you hurt? How much hurt do you hurt? And it just seems so fitting because Sister Priscilla sang the song, Lord, it's in your hands. So you need to learn how to connect the two. How much hurt do you hurt? In our life, we've all been hurt. Can I get a witness? And you see, life is so fragile, but it's also a blessing from God. But here's the deal, sin on sin entered into this world in the beginning, mankind has been, and is still subject would you agree with me? So what does that really mean? It means because of Satan, the first man and the first woman did something God told them not to do. Oh, y'all with me? I hear you in the back. So the question I'm going to ask you this morning, how many times in your life have you done something you knew deep down But, but guess what? You did it anyhow. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm talking about from the pulpit to the pew. Something I knew I had no business doing, but I did it anyhow. Lord have mercy, Jesus. So, so, what happened when you did it anyhow? Lord have mercy. Jesus! 
Jesus. He will. Watch it out. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. My brothers and sisters, because of sin, in this life, we're going to face any, as I said, in all kinds of trouble, but it seems like the most frequent issue we encounter is hurt. Yes, sir. He hurt me. She hurt me. Friends I talk with my friends turn it back on me. They hurt me. Lord have mercy, Jesus. But sometimes it's more mental and spiritual. But now let me tell you what happens. When you hurt mentally and spiritually, it can turn into physical hurt. What do you mean, preacher? I'm talking about Question. 
God was mentally and spiritually hurt when you disobeyed him. All he's asking for you to do when you got a grudge, forgive that person. Even if they don't forgive you, that ain't your business. You're going to be hurt from this time until you close your eyes and get it. But how do you deal with it? When you turn it over to God. I'm going back to that song. Lord, it's in your hands. I know they don't like me. I know they talk all kind of bad stuff about me. But Lord, it's in your hands. You can't make people love you. No, you can't. You can't make people say nice things to you. You can't. But what you can do is say, Lord, is in your hands. Anybody know what I'm talking about in here? How much hurt do you hurt? Probably off the scale. But I do know who your Redeemer is. Yeah. And his name yeah. is Jesus. Just imagine, just imagine how God felt when he put together two of his most prized possessions. I'm talking about Adam and Eve. How did, did he feel when they disobeyed him? That was just awful. And look what we do today. We still hurt God. Yes, we do. When we don't love the way we ought to love. As I just mentioned, when we intentionally try to hurt folk to make yourself feel better. Trust me when I tell you, it won't last. It will not last. Let the foundation of your spirit, That's right. let the makeup of your heart be centered around love. Yes, yes, and when you do that, watch God do some things in your life. Yes. I know, I know it's hard to get over when you've been hurt. I know it's hard. That's when you develop a stronger relationship with God. My Lord. My Lord. Yes. My Lord. I've been hurt My Lord. to the point that I want to take the person out. My Lord. But look at what God has done. Right. He said to me, if you expect me to forgive you, yeah. then you better forgive that person yeah. and move on. Yeah. God will work it out. Yeah. How much hurt? Do you hurt? It will probably be a large scale. But guess what? You can make it through. And you can get over it. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Let this body of believers say amen. 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 If you love it, why don't you give him a hand? Clap for you. Would you stand? Invitation to Christian discipleship. Can we just say, Come to Jesus, my, my, my ministry of music? Can we just sing that, Come to Jesus right now? Can we do that, choir, mass choir? Can, we, can you help the pastor do Come to Jesus right now? Yeah, somebody is hurting this morning. Somebody is hurting. Somebody is really worried about how they're going to make that connection with the person who's hurt them. All you've got to do is take it to Jesus. Just take it to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I'm not asking you to be personal with me. You don't have to tell me if you're hurt or not. But well, God knows if you're hurt or not. Help me, sir.
know. Something just hit me.
you. Lord, those days he's a little down. Pick him up. Wherever he's weak, strengthen him by the power of your spirit. And we will forever be so grateful and honored by you. It is in the precious name of your son Jesus. Let every heart say amen. 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 Come on and give him the praise that he deserves. Give him the praise that he deserves. Chairperson of Witness and Evangelism, Sammy Presley. 
Communications Coordinator, Crystal Soldiers. Prayer Coordinator, Sammy Presley. Recording Secretary, Pearl K. Presley. Church Historian, Patricia Lee Smith. <laughs> Membership Secretary, Priscilla Bryson. Financial Secretary, Deborah Burgess. And Music Director, Marco C. Minchin. Marco Minchin. Mm -hmm. Would you take a step forward and turn toward me?
and see what happens when you let go and let God. Again, I want to thank all of you who came out on yesterday morning. Quite honest, I didn't expect that many folk, but you turned out. Amen. You turned out. Amen. We want to keep Brother Edison in prayer. He will be going back for a procedure later on this month. We want to make sure that he knows that his church family, in addition to his family, study. I'd like you to read Genesis 28, 1 through 5, Genesis. I just thank all of you. 
let's continue to have a good positive attitude. You know what PMA means? PMA means positive mental attitude. Okay? Can we do that? Yeah. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Let us stand for the closing. Acolytes, please come. Thank you.